Hello and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change. I'm here to guide you from frustration to flow in your life, bridging the practical and the woo just for you. Let's go. Welcome to the week, Change Gang. Let's roll. Let's have a little bit of chat. I've been doing a lot of studying with some things. I'm curious, I'm really curious if any of you experience in your life any kind of insomnia, regular headaches, IBS, anxiety, guilt, shame. Depression, withdrawal, oh my gosh, I can keep going on with all of these things. Um, Let's see, some of the have lists over here. Migraines, like the headaches, tinnitus, weight gain, weight loss, where you just can't manage the weight very well. Definitely any kind of substance addiction or diving too deep into them, self-esteem problems, self-sabotage, OCD, the list goes on. The list goes on, unfortunately, for all the things that can come back and end up being related to trauma. And trauma is a big word. And, I, you know, sometimes people can go, oh, you know, that's just life. That's just life. Sometimes it is. And it all depends on how you, over the time, have dealt with life. And everybody deals with it differently. And there's no shame or no right or wrong way. It just is. And sometimes your mind gets stuck in a particular place or anchors into something. We've had conversations about anchors. Anchors into a moment, and it just doesn't let go for a long time. And so your life builds around that. I was looking, as I always do when I'm coming in to talk about certain things, uh, I looked up a definition of trauma. And it says trauma is the pervasive problem. It results from exposure to an incident or series of events that are emotionally disturbing or life-threatening, with lasting adverse effects on the individual and their function. And mental, physical, social, emotional, and or spiritual well-being. That's trauma. That's a lot. And there's actually some different kinds of trauma. There's acute trauma, which can come from a single incident. Chronic trauma, which is repeated or prolonged, like um, abuse of some kind, would definitely be chronic. Uh, Complex is exposure to varied and multiple traumatic events, often of an invasive, interpersonal nature. And that can mean that maybe you did have that abuse at some point in your life. And then later you're involved in possibly a severe car accident that is life-threatening. That's complex. Or you um, go off to war after having experienced something in your life that was very significant to you, possibly the loss of a parent or a broken home can, you know, even do that. Uh, Divorce, divorce in your family can be really hard or just bullying or the cruelty that comes, unfortunately, in life sometimes. That can really add to the possibility of you moving into that complex trauma point later. And people don't like to think about having trauma be a part of their life simply because it's a label like PTSD or CPTSD or I think there's acute chronic stress, something that's another one of them. And no one, I don't know anymore. A lot of people do like to have labels 
because it gives them clarity on something that they don't understand in their own life. And I get that. I get that. But other people just don't want to, you to say, don't, don't label that person like that. Don't say that because somehow it's gotten related to something really horrible in terms of a non-functioning person in society or someone who's way out there disturbed or it's something else. And it's not always the case. It's not always the case. Sometimes it is. I get it. Yeah. Sometimes it's really severe and difficult. And then those people are non-functioning in life. But sometimes it just comes out of blue. It's uh, something that shows up. And they don't even know why it necessarily comes when it comes. There's usually something that's going to come along that brings it out, that triggers it, that brings something in to be more prominent. But it might simply be that now's the time or you're starting to notice more and more that the insomnia is getting worse, that the anger is getting worse, the irritation or withdrawal going off and just not being around people, not being around anyone, is getting worse and worse. The headaches continue and don't go away. The bowel is not functioning in the way that it needs to. All the things, all the things. And it's crazy. It's crazy. And what happens, too, sometimes with that, you'll have all these things that are there, and maybe you will or maybe you won't have the memories of what that trauma is. There's a thing called dissociation where the memories are fragmented, yet they remain embedded in the brain, kind of like shrapnel. And it causes problems. It causes problems to come about. Like, you know, when you get a little sliver under your skin and and it's getting irritated and irritated and irritated and maybe it pops up and sometimes it can get pussy or red or whatever, but it's working its way out sometimes it you can it works its way out and sometimes it needs help and that's what happens sometimes with the journey through trauma there's things that come up that start to say hey we need to work this out and what's going on with that that's really fascinating and interesting what it is is that we have these different parts of ourselves our ego parts that come along with us for the ride in life. And it's the parts that our subconscious kind of creates to deal with all the different parts of life. You have this part that does this, and you have this part that does this, you have all these compartmentalized things. Well, if you have a part of you that had something significant happen at some point in life, it will often have the reaction of, like the fight, flight, freeze, and often the freeze. So it freezes, and it doesn't go anywhere from that point, yet it will start to poke at you like that sliver. It will start to cause problems because you're, you've are gone on with your life, you're continuing on, you're moving on, and it is stuck in that moment of disaster, of trauma. It's stuck in that car accident where your mom died or your dad died or it's stuck in the abuse that's happening or it's stuck in the neglect or the cruelty or the bullying or anything else. Maybe it's a moment of humiliation that happens and it's stuck right there. And it's going to poke at you in life until it finds a way to get your attention and to be addressed. The work that I'm doing now works with that. And it's not about sitting and talking to you and and making you go through all of the things that you went through at all. It's not about that. It's And not, I don't have to know. That's one of the things I love about hypnosis. If you've heard me talk about it, it's uh, what you would say kind of content free. I don't have to know the specifics. I don't need to know what you need to go back to to heal it. I don't need to know everything that happened. Absolutely not. It's not that kind of thing. And I don't want to re-traumatize anyone by taking them into the moment where they were traumatized. It's going into a safe space in your mind under hypnosis while you're in a hypnotic state, comfortable, relaxed, safe, all those wonderful things, and letting your your subconscious, your unconscious mind go in 
and you get to address that little evil part, that little person or big person could have happened 10 years ago. You go in and address the part that is causing the problem, that's causing the irritation, that's causing the irritable bowel, that's causing the guilt that you just can't seem to live with, that is bringing on the depression or the headaches or the fact that you just simply can't sleep. And when you go back and you have the conversation and you address the issues, whether you remember it or don't remember it, when I'm in there walking you through, and I don't know what you're saying, I don't know what's going on, all I know is I'm the guide and I'm saying, here, we're going to work this out together. And when you work that out together and you reintegrate that part of you that was traumatized and hurt, and you're able to then bring them back into the wholeness of yourself and integrate them into this time and space now, and they're not stuck back in that traumatic event, living constantly with it. Can you imagine, just think of a trauma in your life, any trauma, a pet that's passed, a family member that's passed, a car accident, all of that is there. And can you imagine just being stuck in that feeling constantly? You would probably do anything you could to get some attention and get some help and get some relief too. And that's what's going on. That's what's happening in your unconscious and your mind is that part of you needs the attention, needs to get out of where it's at. It's acting out in whatever way it possibly can to bring you to the place of saying, I absolutely have to get help. I have to do something. Even if you don't know what it is, if you're ever at that point, that's why I'm here. That's why I do what I do. That's why I try to help people. But I'm learning even more about how to do that and guide you through those things. I'm actually working with people now in that process. And it's an amazing process so far. And I'm seeing all that information from other people who are working with this as well. And the outcomes are astounding, astounding. It clears up so many things. I can't, I mean, the case studies are incredible. I need to go find some of the case studies so I can just share some of those things with you. I think I talked the other day about um, a guy who stuttered and they went back and found the little guy, the version in that moment where the stuttering started and what had happened and reintegrated and gathered that person out of that moment, brought them forward and the person no longer stuttered from that point on. That's absolutely miraculous to me. There are people who are angry and upset and can't function in life or who are on the verge of losing their family, their job, their everything because they they can't regulate. And it's helping people. What I'm doing is helping people then to get back into the functioning of life. It's clearing up the headaches the irritable bowel syndrome, the chronic back pain, the sleepless nights or the interrupted nights or the nightmares that come along with that, all of those things. It's clearing away that to allow you to live in the state that you are meant to live in, one where you're okay and even happy, even happy. How incredible is that? So if you're going through life, and you're just not sure what's holding you back. Think about some of the things that you've been through. Think about maybe if you've experienced any trauma in life. You know, one of the things that people don't realize is a big trauma is premature birth. Whether you're the baby that was born prematurely or the mom who had the premature baby or the dad. A premature birth can be extremely stressful for everyone involved. And can leave a lasting mark from that point on. From that point on in life, that's one of those those trauma markers. And abuse, abuse of any kind, physical, verbal, sexual, emotional, all of the different abuses bring with them trauma. Bullying, you know, that's, that's become a big deal anymore. It wasn't such a big deal when I was a kid. You just kind of got, you did get bullied or you got beat up or you got stalked and traumatized and all. (laughs) And I laugh about it, but some of those things leave lasting marks. I can remember clearly 
one of the girls who really liked to be a bully in my life. My friends bullied her back and it stopped. That's there. Dyslexia can be a huge marker for for trauma in your life. Um, the loss of a family member, a parent, an alcoholic or substance abusing parent can be something that causes trauma in your life. Neglect. And sometimes the simplest ways when a parent is just not available to the child. Separation from a parent. If you've gone through divorce and one parent went one way and another, whether you got to see that parent or not, there was a separation. That can be something that triggers trauma in your life. And oftentimes, yes, we get through some of that. We absolutely do. And we're able to bring that part of us forward and heal along the way with it. And that's great. That's that's wonderful. Then you shouldn't be having any of the symptoms that I talked about. You should be doing good in, in health, mentally, physically, all of that. You should be doing good. The thing is that sometimes we think we've moved beyond something. I worked on that. I did therapy. I did this. I'm good now. Yet, can't sleep or shift, or I still have all the headache. And you just don't even think that it could be related to the thing that you've worked on and cleared all of that. Maybe it's not quite clear. Maybe it's not quite as healed as it needs to be. And I think just being aware of that is so important. And that's why I'm here talking about it, is that sometimes we don't realize how much we carry with us in our life and how much we bring forward and that sometimes going in just a little bit deeper or checking in with someone and saying, hmm, yeah, I do have a few of those things. And yes, oh gosh, I was bullied. Is there a way to clear that? Because don't you want to go into life then feeling good and not having headaches? I can tell you what, as a person who had headaches daily and migraine quite often for a very long time in my life, to go through a day where you don't have a headache is amazing. It's amazing. It's almost like a little miracle. Can you imagine having that little miracle for the rest of your life where the headaches just disappear? Or all of a sudden your bowels are working in a way that allows you to be more than 10 feet from the toilet? I would say that's a big bonus, not to mention some of the other things that it shows up in in terms of intimacy, sex life, all of those things. It can absolutely show up in there, too. And I am saying cheers to all of you that go and do the things and go through therapy and do the best that you can to bring things forward. And that can be very healing. I would never say, ooh, therapy is shit, because it's gotten a lot of people through a lot of things. Absolutely. But if it hasn't gotten you all the way through, then supplement it. Then do something more. Add in the, the, the hypnosis, the NLP. Add in some of the other things that are out there if that's what you're being drawn to. But find the connection for yourself to clear the things that you need to clear because that's important. It's important in whatever you're doing in life to be living it to the fullest. If you're only living at half capacity, can you just imagine what life would be like if you were even at 80, 90 percent, much less 100 percent. Wow. How fun would that be? How fun would that be to sleep more than four hours or to sleep without being woken up every couple of hours or to have the balance in your hormones and your system that lets you release anxiety and no longer have that connection. You no longer have the panic breathing or the pits in your stomach or any of those things. You get to release them. What a joy. A joy. So, of course, there's all the things to do to check in with yourself as you're doing this. So it is important when you have trauma in your life to talk with people that you feel like you can talk with at the time that it's happening because it does help release and recognize it. Take care of yourself. Rest. Absolutely rest when you need to rest. Do the things that you need to do. Eat in a way that is good and healthy for you, especially if you're going through clearing the things and changing your life. That's a part of it. 
to do a little bit of check-in. Can you get rid of some of the crap you're eating? Could you possibly add in a few healthier things? I think everyone can make a few adjustments. I just think that everyone can. Unless you're just like the cleanest eater in the world. Good for you. Good for you. Then I would say, treat yourself. Hopefully you do. But uh, do what's good for your body. If it's painful to treat yourself, don't do it. I have a friend who simply cannot eat ice cream. And for whatever reason, they ended up with an ice cream cake on his birthday. And, of course, he ate some of it, I think, a fair amount, and was then just in pain and discomfort and had a horrible, don't do that to yourself. If you know it's going to cause you issue, just don't do that. So do the things that you need to do. Do the talking when you need to. Do the resting when you need to. Search out other help if you need to, if you're feeling like you're stuck and in that little washing machine going around and around and around and getting beat up and not feeling like you're getting anything cleaned out or done and it's just not feeling good. Reach out to someone like me. It doesn't have to be me, but someone like me that can help you through the process in a better way. Check into the nutrition and all of those things that are there and connect with whatever it is that you can connect with, whether it is yourself, whether it is something bigger than yourself, whether it is simply your intuition so that it guides you in the way that you need to be guided or the universe, if that's your power, God, if that's yours, connect in the way that says, hey, I do need a little guidance. I do need a little help. Get me where I need to go. When you put that out there, it will respond and it will help you find a way to help what's going on in your life. There you go. There you go, my friends. I hope that was informative to you. I wanted it to be informative and I want it to be a little bit encouraging for you to know that whatever you're suffering through, whatever you're going through, there is help out there. And I know sometimes people in chronic situations with chronic pain, chronic disease, chronic all the whatevers, feel like they've done it all, tried everything, done these things. Don't give up. Don't give up. Try one more thing. It might be the thing. It might be the thing that changes everything. Let yourself go into that intuitive state, into the connection with the universe, into whatever it is, and ask. And then follow where it leads and you'll find some good things. So there we are. Just being aware that there might be something that you need to know is more than enough to help the healing process begin. So even if you heard one thing in there that you didn't know, it might trigger something to help you along the way. Okay. As always, let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. And in the meantime, I will meet you right here next week. Ciao. I hope today's episode was interesting to you in some way and fun. If so, hey, find someone to share it with. Maybe they need to hear it too, or maybe they'll just enjoy it. If you'd like, go ahead and grab my tips on supercharging your success. It includes a free short meditation to do just that. You can find that at bit.ly slash supercharge your success. Until next time, happy day. Thank you.